Hey everybody, how you doing? This is gonna be a short video I'm gonna make about why I don't use Visual Studio Code. <laughs> it looks so funny. Uh, so uh, the point though is that I want to show a, I would say a legacy feature now of Sublime Text, but a feature that I use on a daily basis that I think is like an accessibility feature. I don't really consider it accessibility, like you gotta be handicapped to use it or something, you know, you have to have some eye deficiency. I think it actually just helps you read the code, but for me, a lot of code is very difficult to read and when I put it in this mode, it's actually significantly easier. So I'll show you what that looks like. Whoop. And give me a second. Okay, so here's Sublime Text. I'm gonna, I'll just full screen it so you can see. So let's say I wanna write some JavaScript. And the JavaScript is something like this, uh, variable name. And what about like a component? We could do like React style, right? Component, mm, test component, and it'll just immediately return a div. Now I'm gonna tell you something here. I know what color the div's gonna be, and I knew that this was gonna be yellow. And I know the component's supposed to be pink. And so this thing's gonna be green, like a green color, like light green, yeah, see? And the reason I know that is because I've done it enough. Children will be blue. See? And, and the reason I can tell this is because I've done it enough uh, to see it. And so I start recognizing things based on the color, and I start being able to read code based on color. Now, notice here, I'm going to put a paragraph around this children. It's going to be a light, or it's going to be a little bit darker green. And I can also uh, put, let's see what else I can do. I can put a span around it that's going to be blue. So the span is going to be like a light blue. Cyan. I, it's more like almost a teal color, but it's more cyan. So I'm, I've gotten really used to these colors, and it's not because I've gotten used to the colors and I'm tied to it, but no other editor, as far as I know, has this capability. Now, from what I understand, Sublime Text has this built in now, but it doesn't work like this. Nobody's to actually program this in. So I might have to do that because I'm kind of stuck on an older version of the Babel Sublime plugin, which allows you to get this uh, JSX syntax highlighting. And the problem with it is that uh, because I because I depend on this every day and the maintainer of the old library hasn't like converted it for the new version of Sublime Text, uh, I'm going to have an issue going forward. And so I haven't really considered what to do, but this is, this is why I don't use Visual Studio Code because it doesn't do this. It doesn't do this coloring. This coloring is very predictable. It's the same. It's consistent. I can use it anywhere. If I have text component and I do one of these, there it is. It's yellow still. Now, if I call it as a function, it does change until I hit new line, which is kind of weird, but typically the way I write my code, I write it like this anyway. Even if I'm passing variables to it, I do hit the inner key. So for me, it doesn't, it doesn't cause a problem. But if you just call the test component like this, yeah, it would end up being purple. Uh, which is a little bit weird, but it's because of the hacky way that this is set up and it, that, you know how it, how it interacts with this version of Babel Sublime. I've gotten so used to it, though. There are some things, I mean, it could be improved, right? There are some improvements, but it basically does a CRC32 check, if I remember correctly, on, on this. And then whatever that ends up being, it gets hashed into a hex code. And then that, that is the number. It's, it's weird, though, because if you do some numbers, let's say like... Um, uh, let's say T1, okay, T2. They, notice how these are like slightly off from each other? So this is interesting. So these colors are kind of like a gradient when you start doing this, but it's also nice because I can just skim the code and I see, oh, one, two, three, four, five. If, if like the eight was here, I would notice because something's wrong. And I can just easily check everything like this. So let's, let's see, say I'm gonna call test component or let's call it um, test function. Now, if I just call it test, okay, if I call it test, it's gonna be purple. Watch this, yeah, see? I, I've gotten so used to it, I can just identify code by color. It's, it's interesting, and it's something that most people don't do. I, I know, like, my sister still uses this, and I, I don't know how many other developers are using this color coder technology, but it's also interesting because if I know test function is supposed to look like this, I actually don't because I've never written a function called test function, but I, I have written test. I've written func in cyan color. And if, if it was misspelled, I would notice it was misspelled because the color's different. Now, sometimes the color's close. Sometimes I can show you, uh, if you, if you change two letters, um, it gets, it's like really close. Like this is kind of a violet instead of a purple, right? And so it's close. And so you might not notice it, but that, that's not, the point of this is not, oh, I can notice I misspelled it or something, but it also helps you notice patterns. Because if I do things like, uh, I have a variable here, let's say like, um, I don't know, first stuff and second. So these, these are red. Uh, they don't, they don't have a color unless they're a variable, then they do have a color. So I'm just going to pretend like there's a variable named first and second. Um, if I saw this and I, I started seeing something like the, I hate that thing that covers the screen. I still have not figured it out what, what that is. 
Uh, but but if I see this, I can tell something's different. It's this one, and I can also tell that this one is third, and there's second up here. It's just easy to to eyeball it and and see exactly what's going on. So that that's the that's the main reason I do this. Uh, I I I can turn off the color coder if I remember correctly. You do it from here. Yeah, and this is what it looks like. I mean, this is what is it? This is useless to me. It's all white, and there's like this blue color I can't see now. Now, obviously, you can change your syntax highlighting, but it does not fix this, right? I can't. I can't. There's no consistency in it. It's consistency that this is a function, and the function is called that. Because if I if I write func here and call it, it's also just the same. It's this blue color, but that doesn't help me. I don't care what it, that is. It is a function, or that it is a. Um, I don't care that it's a function or a class or anything like that. What I care about is that it is something with this name on it. Because usually when I look through the code, I see patterns. And the patterns are really helpful. So I'll show you, for example, uh, one form. Then... Hmm? That was weird. My mouse went away for a second there. Okay, so this is what it looks like when I'm editing. I don't know why I have the change log on both sides. Uh, can I not full screen this? Or full screen it? Okay, fine. When you full screen it, it centers everything, which is not what I want. There we go. Okay. So if I, if I, this is like not as helpful, but if I go to a file, which I would edit normally, which would be something like, uh, some, something hook. Okay. Use some, there. Great. This, uh, this should be a purplish color. Yeah, exactly. So I know where this is just by looking at the colors. I don't even have to read it. I know that create observable is this orange color. I know every single color of these. Use effect is always green. Use memos is like reddish orange. This is always orange. This is always yellow. You, you use context as a pink color. So there you go. I don't, I didn't, in the past, I wouldn't have necessarily known what color it was. I couldn't tell you what color it was, but if I saw it, I would know what it is. And then I can just look at the code. I can see these patterns, right? I can see this is used here and it's down here. I can see this is used here. I also know subscribers, this color, I know subscribe is this color. And so I start being able to just skim the code like this and I can read it because I, I can tell by the color. See, I've noticed this one like three or four times here. It's here, here, it's here, you know, and I can see it because I'm skimming it. This is really important to me. And it should be really important to other people too, because once you start identifying patterns and you can tell by colors, you can just skim code. You can just do one of these and you see it. Like I already know unsubscribe is here and there's your subscriber, but I know this unsubscribe function is going to be this color because that's what it always is. And it's very interesting, right? Now, if it had a dot, let's say this had a dot, it's still unsubscribe. So if there was like um, observable dot, whatever, right? It's the same color. It doesn't change. So it's got that consistency to it. Consistency is important to me because the more consistent things are, the easier they are to identify over time. And the easier it is for somebody else to just look at something and say, oh, I get how that works. I understand that. Uh, the promises, for instance, uh, dot then is always this lighter green and dot catch is this darker green. I know you might say, well, those are look really similar. Yeah, they do. I can't do anything about it. But the point is that everything else is very nicely colored. So it's very easy to tell them apart. Now, I mean, I'm kind of stressing on this point a lot, but let's look at this file. Uh, I, know, I know there's noise here. I'm going to get rid of the noise. Let's just... I want in the middle. I want I wanted this in the middle. Okay, so let's turn it off and then see what I, what it looks like. Okay, so this is using I don't know which color scheme I'm using. Let's see which color scheme I'm using. So color scheme color CCC. I'm using Candyman. Okay. Well, yeah, I think I'm using Candyman. So I turned it back on. Okay, let's turn it off. So if you see here, I've just got like white and some green and like, I can't tell these apart. If somebody wanted to ask me like, oh, is that thing imported? I don't know. I have to read it. Okay. Use callback. Use I mean, I can scan it pretty quick. Right. But I'd have to look at them to figure out which one's there. I wouldn't be able to tell you if you use callback was here just by looking at it. But with the colors, I could have told you it would have been pink. I would have been able to see it immediately and said, ah, oh, use callbacks in there. And so it's really beneficial. Uh, so let's see. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't see it. There's just a bunch of white now. All I'm seeing is a bunch of white. So if I scroll through here, I can't read this anymore. I, I can't tell you what's in here. I have to like look. Okay, so some of these blue ones are a little bit helpful because they stand out. But it's not really helpful because I can't really... Most of the important information is white. Like all of this is white. And even if it was a different color, they'd still all be the same color. It's not really that helpful. Just changing the hue is not going to do anything. Changing the color though. So if I go out and back in, you can see it loaded. This looks so much better. It's a consistent. I can already tell you that this and this code are the same because I saw they look exactly the same. There's like a, a trifecta of colors that are repeated in one spot and the other. And I would really, really hope somebody builds this tooling in for me so that I don't have to spend my time on it. I have like a lot of things I do spend my time on and it might be fun to actually build this in. The problem is I got to spend time like figuring out how to parse all this code and how Sublime Text does it. And then, and do I even want to do it in Sublime Text? Do I want to use VS Code? Like I'd love to use VS Code because of that's, that's where everybody's, oh man, it's going in the red. Uh, 
that's where everybody's doing all their effort. All, all the effort today for JavaScript land is being done in VS Code. And so I'd prefer to use it, even though I know like Sublime Text is really fast and it's great and whatever, the linting is a little slow. Um, but but VS Code is has all this stuff built into it. And it's a newer editor and it's got newer plugins and it's more supported. And I'd really su prefer to use VS Code, but they don't support anything like this. They would, it would never be supported, at least the way it is. Because when I asked about it and they were like, yeah, we added support for that. And then I asked people and they're like, no, we don't have support for that. And it's like, oh, Oh, now I see what you're talking about. We don't have support. There's no way you could do anything like this in there. You know, I, even if I write code different than other people, it shouldn't mean that like, oh, um, you know, you can't you can't write an accessibility layer on top of the way the code is highlighted. You know, we, we have a there, there, it's called semantic highlighting. I didn't even talk about that at the beginning of the video, but this kind of coloring of code is called semantic highlighting because it semantically colors the code based on the names that you are choosing for them. There are some other people I've seen that have done some colors like this whole thing. Actually, all of this here would be one color because he talked about scopes matter in JavaScript. And that was back with callback hell, but this is also callback, right? So this would all be in scope. So it'd all be one color, which still doesn't help me. But he was talking about how like um, having a return statement, this color or having like a, a const statement, this color or a new statement, this color doesn't help him. Yeah, I can see that. What's what's also interesting here is this is this blue color. If I yeah, see this is uh, this is because the classes aren't supported properly with with the syntax. I mean the, the highlighter that I'm using. Yeah, this is always really helpful though. I can always tell just by eyeballing it exactly what I'm reading without having to eyeball. I know this filter is red. I know the entries is this darker blue, and so I can just read this knowing like what what's there. And maybe this is why I can read code in a different way from other people is because I just look at the colors and I can just read it and I, I know what's going on. I don't know. I don't know. It's a good question. Yeah. All values is always this color. I, I see so many recognizable things like, yep, yeah, I expect that color. This one, I don't know. If somebody asked me this, I wouldn't know. I know has is this color. Add is also a, a yellow color, but it's a little bit lighter yellow, but I knew add is a yellow color as well. So you could say, oh, you might get those mixed up. Yeah, I might. Except for has has two items and, and uh, why, why are there two? Oh, cause this is reflect.has. Okay, because normally I'm doing is like a set dot has a set dot has is gonna be it's gonna be like this, yeah. So they're very similar here. So hopefully this gives you a little bit of an insight. This is I want to do a short video. This is a little bit longer than I wanted. You know, it talks so much about the colors to show examples and to show like what you what you can expect. I mean, if you've watched any of my videos, you would see this and you will see it in the future. Hopefully, as long as it's still supported, uh, except for this thing where it like pops up on my screen. I'm about to like figure out what the heck this is. Okay, no, no, no. Nope, not going to do it in this video. Absolutely not going to do it in this video. I just want to show you what I deal with on a daily basis, what I like to see. And, you know, this is, I would count it as accessibility feature. Really helps make the code readable, even if you can't read the code. You know, even if you can't understand it, you can start seeing patterns and it helps you. This is, that pattern identification is extremely important, in my opinion. So, cool. Hope you got some different view of whatever. I don't know. I'm not going to end the video. What am I? I'll just end it. I'll end it while I'm